Welcome back to the video, the video lecture series on pathology. In this video, we're going to talk about the coagulation cascade. Um, the coagulation cascade can seem like a very complicated, messy process, but it's it's very simple, and I'm going to try to you know break it down here. There's three main pathways. There's there's three main pathways. The first one is the intrinsic pathway. The second is the extrinsic pathway, and the third is kind of where these two converge, and it's called the common pathway. The first one is the intrinsic pathway. And what the coagulation cascade is is in in general is it needs there's there's a process of where there's so there's there's three main um things to remember when we're talking about the coagulation cascade is we've seen kind of all these messy steps here and in every step there's an enzyme an activated coagulation factor there's a substrate you know something that's going to be converted um, a substrate proenzyme form of a coagulation factor and there's a cofactor you know something that causes the reaction to accelerate and you know an example is vitamin K vitamin K is a cofactor so you know in, in this first step there's there's some kind of enzyme there's or there's a substrate there's a proenzyme and then that is converted to an activated an activated enzyme and there's a little a here to a, a subscript to kind of indicate that that it is now activated so in the intrinsic pathway, this this factor 12, if you will, and here's kind of a key if you need it, but the Hagman factor, um, but you know factor 12, all it needs to do is hit a surface contact. It's very e this intrinsic pathway is very easily activated. Anytime this hits a surface, um, it gets converted into factor 12 that's activated. So now it becomes an enzyme. It was a substrate, you know, it was a, it started out with a substrate and then it went to an enzyme as once it got converted. Now this factor 12 that's activated then meets up with factor 11, converts it, and we're not going to go through like the biochemistry of this. We're just going to talk about general principles principles but then it goes into then a uh, factor 11 becomes activated and then guess what factor 11 does the same thing that factor 12 did it meets up with factor 9 and then it becomes converts factor 9 into an activated an activated process and then the active the activated 9 um, enzyme meets up with factor 10 and some other things, calcium, and turns into an activated factor 10. And you can kind of see this line here. If you, if you can't see it, I'm trying to draw it in here. But this is kind of the intrinsic pathway. And then the intrinsic pathway meets and all converges on uh, you know, this factor 10 or this activated factor 10. You know, that's the intrinsic pathway and you're prob you might be thinking to yourself, well, if this guy is floating around in the blood, factor 12, and any time he hits a surface, he's going to start this coagulation cascade. What what inhibits, you know, why does our why doesn't our blood always coagulate? Why isn't like our blood just, you know, making blood clots all the time in in our blood vessels? Well, you have, and we talked about this a little bit in the in the last last video, but there's constantly this process going on, and there's constantly a process that's reverting this, that's inhibiting this process from going any further. It's kind of like an equilibrium process. Um, there's tissue plasminogen activator, uh, TPA, and thrombomodulin. For that are secreted from the endothelial cells in your blood vessels and they kind of inhibit this process from happening and you can kind of go back in the last few videos and and look up why 
how these guys do what they do, but in general, these this tissue plasminogen activator, this TPA and thrombomodulin, inhibit this cascade from form not only the intrinsic but also the extrinsic, but they inhibit mostly the intrinsic though, and they inhibit this process from coming down the line and forming a blood clot. Because if you know, well, that just leads us into the second, the second type, the second pathway. This in this in this extrinsic pathway, and this is the most common. Extrinsic pathway is the most common pathway in our body that that this um, the most powerful, if you will, that causes a clot. So if we have tissue damage. Okay, so if a blood vessel gets damaged in some way, the extracellular matrix has factors in it, and this simply this this uh, after this tissue damage happens, there's a tissue factor. Okay, this is a membrane-bound um, lipoprotein, you know, that sticks out at the end of a. This is a cell here. It sticks out. Uh, out of its membrane, and it's kind of a trigger for this activated seven factor to convert um, factor ten to an activated form. So you see that the, once there's a tissue damage in the blood vessel, there's this tissue factor that pops up on the cells, on the cells that are that are. Um, by the tissue that's damaged, and then that tissue factor is a signal to convert factor 10 into an activated uh, factor 10. And then that process happens with calcium. And then once this fact, this activated tac factor 10 happens, then it will combine with prothrombin to convert it to thrombin. Now thrombin is the biggest player in this whole coagulation cascade. You got to remember thrombin. And and thrombin is is, you know, circulating in, you know, after it's been activated, it's kind of circulating in in the blood there. And then thrombin converts fibrinogen, which is a soluble uh, you know, component of the blood clot. It converts it to fibrin. And fibrin then it becomes insoluble which means that water cannot break it up. It's going to be there kind of more permanent of a more permanent type of a situation. And you can review the last videos that talk that kind of show um, this process here. But fibrinogen and fibrin, they form this uh, the secondary plug and they uh, kind of connect platelets together. They they um, you know they attach to these complexes and you know in this blood clot you they kind of can entrap uh, white blood cells and other different um, cells that will help kind of repair and stabilize the blood clot so that blood doesn't keep leaking out into the flu into the extracellular matrix into the tissues now once this fibrin is converted from fibrinogen to fibrin by this uh, thrombin here then factor 13 becomes activated and then they form a then they form cross links they you know if one fibrin molecule is here and another fibrin molecule is here they they form this cross link right here and then this forms the stable fibrin clot so that's it that is pretty much the coagulation cascade in a nutshell there's a few more before I finish this video there's a few couple other things that I want to talk about and they are the prothrombin time PT and the partial thromboplastin time the PPT and we're going to talk about those in the next video but just kind of to plant the seed um, if you're a doctor or if you're a healthcare provider and you want to kind of see how you know a drug's working on your on your patient that has bleeding disorder or bleeding problems then you can run these tests and what these do will they'll kind of an, analyze this extrinsic pathway and this intrinsic pathway to kind of give you you know a sense of what's going on and we'll talk about those in the next video and some of the drugs these are drugs 
that have to do with uh, their anticoagulants is warfarin and coumadin. Um, so if you're um, if you're pro if your if your body likes to create blood clots or if you just had a surgery and you know you're afraid that the doctor's afraid you don't you're going to get a blood clot then they might put you on these drugs to uh, prevent clotting in your blood so you don't have blood clots that could eventually kill you and we'll talk about how you know the danger of blood clots in the uh, next in the next few videos and there's also you know if outside uh, of humans if you have a little rodent that you want to get rid of like rats or mice or something sometimes you know you'll give them this rat poison and what this rat poison does is it goes in and it prevents their um, rodent bodies to to form blood clots and so part of the rodent drugs uh, poison inside probably will break up and cause damage to the vascular system which will cause bleeding and then another drug will inhibit some of these factors so that they'll continue to bleed out and that's how some of these rat poisons get rid of rodents so we will see you in the next video